Guys, during tough economic times, a lot of people consider moving cash or assets like gold across borders. So for people in the US and Canada, they usually don't know the rules for moving cash and gold between Canada and the US or US and Canada. So right now I am in Canada and there is Lake Ontario behind me and I'm here among other reasons to move some gold that I have in a safe deposit box back to the US. So I'm going to talk about why I had this box here and uh, why I'm moving it and the rules that I'm going to encounter in bringing it back uh, for gold but also for cash. So if you want to know the actual rules, there's a lot of rumors out there on what you can bring if the government's going to seize it from you either in Canada or the US. There's all these stories of uh, US police seizing people's money, arresting the money, that kind of thing. So I'm going to talk about what the rules are and I actually called the customs offices and talked to officers there so they clarified for me what the rules are and hopefully I will be able to video my interaction as I leave Canada and enter the US and go through US customs with the gold that I'm bringing back. So we'll see how that goes. So I always say you should diversify in your bank accounts, your brokerage accounts and even the countries that you hold some assets in and so I actually did that during around the 2010 at the financial crisis when a lot of people thought that you know all the assets would collapse or the dollar would go down or banks would collapse they actually had to raise the FDIC limit during that time to get people not to take their money out of banks so I actually went to some other countries and opened up bank accounts and I also went to Canada to open a bank account but more specifically to open a safe deposit box so I can actually bring some things in and store them here as kind of a close by bug out location uh, for some of my gold. But fast forward some years later and I haven't been back to Canada since about 2014 when I moved down to Florida. So it was a lot farther to go to access it and then 2019 came and I never in a million years thought that I would be locked out of Canada for three years or so. So needless to say, I no longer think it is a good idea to keep anything in a safe deposit box up here if the borders could be closed again and I won't be able to access it. So that's why I want to move it closer to home. So if you watch some of these shows like How to Catch a Smuggler on uh, JFK Airport or they have a Canadian version as well where they are at the border and in the airports in Toronto, a lot of times they confiscate people's money just because they didn't fill out the correct form when they came in. And so another thing is they can take it if they think that it is related to a crime like money laundering or tax evasion or something like that. Do you have any money in your suitcase? Uh, yes. How much money do you have uh, in your suitcase? Almost, uh, nine uh, thousand. Nine thousand? People can travel with as much money as they like, they just have to report it. There's over ten thousand dollars here. It says if you're carrying currency equal to or greater than ten thousand dollars Canadian, it must be reported. And you've said no here, okay? It's my job as an officer now to find out if this is good money or if this is bad money. Where does the money come from? From Iran. I uh, sold uh, my apartment. Okay, and how much did you sell it for? Because I don't believe it's from a sale of your apartment. I'm concerned that this money isn't legitimate. I'd like to proceed with a level four seizure. When the money is seized as a level four, it's seized as suspected proceeds of crimes. Basically, it says that the money that you are carrying with you today is being seized by the government as suspected proceeds of crime. So you have 90 days to appeal it. If you can prove that the money is good money, then you'll get the money back. A search of this Canadian traveler's bag has already yielded an undeclared gold bar. And now, the cash he's carrying is also a problem. You had more than $10,000. You're close to 11. So I've fined you. You got a penalty okay. Okay. Um, of $250 for the monies. That's the lowest penalty I could give you. Okay. Okay? okay. 
But you see, this is the other problem. You forgot about the gold bar. Okay. Do you want to know how much this gold bar is worth today? $44.94 a gram. This is 50 grams. 50. It's 50 grams, so it's over $2,200. I have seized this, and it's going to cause you to get it back. So if you just watch these things, you think that um, you may get your stuff confiscated if you're going through a border. So what's the real rules for bringing in cash and gold across into Canada and out of Canada into the U.S.? So the rule that everybody knows is that if you have $10,000 or more, you need to report it. And what does that mean? Well, for the U.S., it means if you're coming into the U.S. with $10,000 U.S. dollars or more, you need to file the FinCEN 105 and give it to the customs agents before uh, they check your bag and find it. You have to uh, give it to them beforehand because if you don't, they could say you were trying to hide it and you didn't um, give them the form you were trying to get through. For Canada, it's the same thing, $10,000, but it's 10,000 Canadian dollars. So if you have U.S. dollars uh, and the exchange rate brings those U.S. dollars over 10,000 Canadian, that's considered reportable. And so you need to file the E-677 with the Canadian Customs as well if you're bringing in that money. Now here's where the things get tricky because they always say every time you see an article about some seizure that they made, they always say at the end of the article, it's not illegal to bring in any amount of money you want, but you have to declare it. That's true. However, there's nothing to say that if you get a grumpy or overly suspicious customs agent that even if you give them the form and say, here, I got $20,000 I'm bringing in, they could start asking you questions about it. And if they don't like those answers, they could say, hey, guess what? I think this is from money laundering. I think this is from tax evasion. Uh, so. If you don't have a bank account statement showing that you just took out this money, you know, recently from an actual bank account, they could say, well, I don't know where this money came from and you don't have any receipts and we're going to arrest the money. And now you have to hire a lawyer to try to get it back. And you may, you may get it back. You may get some of it back. You may get none of it back. So uh, that's the problem with coming through the border. And so I suggest if you are planning on bringing a large amount of cash, you have some kind of either receipt or show that you have a lot of money in a bank or your tax returns or your, you know, job information that you've been working for a number of years making a lot of money. I mean, if you show that you work in McDonald's and you're trying to bring in $300,000 in cash, you're going to have a big problem. Uh, if you're Bill Gates and you come in with you know, a million dollars in cash, nobody's gonna ask questions, right? So there's different penalties for not uh, giving in the form when you cross the borders. The US uh, is a little more severe. I think they can take the whole thing. Canada has like three different levels. If they find it and they didn't think you were hiding it, that's one level, like 250 bucks. If, if it was like concealed in your car, like, you know, behind the dashboard or something like that, they consider that trying to hide it in a concealed compartment and they could uh, most likely arrest it and probably you won't get it back or you'll have a hard time getting it back. So make sure that you have the form and when you pull up to the first customs officer you see, you tell them I'm carrying this amount of cash and I have the form filled out and here you go. Now, as for carrying things like gold, in particular gold bullion and there's a distinction if it is not like 999 fine gold if it's maybe just like partially gold or something that's a different thing jewelry is also a different thing but I'm talking about gold bullion so specifically things like a one ounce gold bar a gold Canadian maple leaf one ounce coin or an American eagle gold coin one ounce something like that that is considered gold bullion it's more than 99% pure gold and so they have different rules for that and these coins these bullion coins have a face value on them so for instance Canadian maple leaves have a $50 face value American gold eagles have a $50 face value so some people say when you're bringing in a one ounce Canadian coin you're really only bringing in $50 
of Canadian money, right? Because that's what it says on the coin. And other people say that's ridiculous because a one ounce coin is worth like, you know, 1700 US or 2200 Canadian. And there's no way that uh, you're gonna be able to bring $250 coins and say you're only bringing in 10,000, right? So uh, that's the problem. And so I called both Canadian Customs and U.S. Customs because if you are already in Canada and you want to leave with that money or that gold and it's over the threshold, you need to file with Canadian Customs before you leave Canada. And if you're driving out, that's not really uh, possible. You don't hit a Canadian booth and then an American booth. You just hit the American booth. So you have to stop at Canadian Customs before you even leave to go to the American booth on the way out. So here's what US Customs told me. They said that bullion gold, something like 999 gold, meaning Canadian Maple Leafs, gold American Eagles, Kruger Ends, that kind of stuff, gold bars, 24 karat gold bars, are considered non-monetary assets and what that means is they're not considered they're not considered money and so they're not reportable now this doesn't make a lot of sense because they're worried that you're bringing in ten thousand and a dollar yet they're not worried if you bring in 200 one ounce coins that are worth three hundred thirty thousand dollars it sounds ridiculous but that's what they told me as for the Canadian side, <laughs> I called Canada Customs and they told me the same thing basically over the phone. But when I drove through the border, I asked the Customs Guard, the Canadian Customs Guard, the question as well. Okay, so let's see what kind of restrictions you have to bring money to and gold coins through miles. here. I'm gonna be bringing back some gold coins and I called the Canadian CPB and asked them what the, the limitation is because they're Canadian $50 face value and but they're worth uh, $1,700 each let's yeah. say and they told me over the phone that they only go by the face value. Is that correct? I don't believe so. I think if the gold's worth more than $10,000 Okay, because when I called, they, they told me that, and the American board had told me the same thing. That is a non-monetary instrument. Yeah, you just check with them when you're crossing into the U.S. That's the best way to do it, because we have different laws. I know coming in here, if you have more than $10,000 worth of gold, you need to declare it. Okay, but so I should call CPB again, because if it is, if they do consider it over 10000 then I need to declare it with Canada first before I leave, right? You need to declare it with us before you leave if it's more than 10000 yeah. Okay. Regardless of what CBP says. Regardless of what CBP says. And where would I do that? At the, there's no booth on the way back, right? You just stop in the parking lot on the other side here, uh -huh. behind the building, and you come down into the counter and they'll help you there. Okay. All right. Thank you. So conflicting, <laughs> conflicting information. When I called up, they said. It's the $50 face value, and this guy says it is not the $50 face value. So, which is it? I'm gonna have to call them up again and uh, see what's going on. I called back the Canadian Customs uh, just a few days ago, and this time uh, the person I spoke to wasn't really sure. They got me a supervisor, and the supervisor asked me a number of questions like, what the purity of the gold was, was it more than 90% and things like that. And even she had to go uh, ask somebody else to go get answers to these questions because I guess they don't encounter them all the time. So she went out and got me uh, the answers. And basically what she said is... I will transfer you to a senior officer just to okay. make sure you get a good information. I appreciate that. Thank you. But normally it, 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 goes, to the, it goes with the gold. The gold value. It doesn't matter, you won't be charged duties and tax or anything, uh -huh. but it, it would be with the value. Just to make sure I'll transfer you to a senior office. Okay, thank right. you very much. Gold coins that are 99.5% pure uh, is no longer considered uh, a monetary instrument. It's a, it's a, uh, that needs to be 
uh, gold coins are not considered a, a monetary instrument. Okay. That need to be declared in, in terms of that ten thousand dollar rule. Okay. So what you're saying is, if it has a fifty dollar face value on it, I could bring up to two hundred coins. That would be less than you know up to ten thousand dollars of face value, and that would not need to be reported. Correct. It doesn't need to be reported. It doesn't matter the face value. The, what, the oh. gold coins are not considered a monetary instrument for that ten thousand uh dollar -huh. rule. Okay, so you heard it. It's a non-monetary metal, and it doesn't need to be reported, even the face value, uh, fifty dollar face value. That's what they say. So I'm going to be leaving Canada in a few days and I'm going to be driving through the border and I'm going to bring some gold with me that's definitely going to be above $10,000 worth of gold. Um, I am going to fill out the FinCEN 105 for the American side but not the E677 for the Canadian side. So I got to say I'm still a little nervous and it seems like a risk that you have to go through here and if they just misinterpret the rules or decide that they think you look shady or something like that they you know shoot first and ask questions later basically that they say hey we're gonna confiscate this and go hire a lawyer and uh, fight us and pay money and then maybe we'll give you some back so we'll see how it goes and hopefully I get my gold across the border without any kinds of problems or confiscations and hopefully this video will clear up the issues of what you can and can't bring across the border and the paperwork you have to file to do that. So I'm a few cars from the customs agent now. Okay, so I'm gonna be up soon. I got a bunch of gold with me. Uh, let's see how this goes. And although I was told from the custom agent on the phone at this very location that this is considered non a monetary instrument the agents here at the booths may not know all the little intricacies of these types of laws so they may at first think that you know it is reportable and maybe they're gonna ask to their supervisor or something like that or send me to secondary to see what I have and then decide based on the rules what this is or what this isn't and if I need to file the FinCEN 105 or not. Um, even calling even calling Canadian Customs when I was explaining the one ounce gold Canadian maple leaf which every gold bug knows what it is or every coin collector knows what it is these agents don't necessarily know what these gold coins are maybe they don't see a lot of them so their first instinct is to say hey it's reportable but then maybe when they ask a supervisor or whatever they clarify the rules hopefully and uh, don't give me a problem with this stuff so let's see so I got two cars ahead of me <laughs> um, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna say but already I'm already kinda nervous about who knows what kind of agent you're gonna get if they just decide that they want to send me to secondary or confiscate my stuff and uh, say prove that you bought these legally or that whatever where did you buy them or something like that so who knows how it's gonna go I'm kind of anxious to see how this goes so we'll see okay I'm up next so oh, it says no cameras no cell phone no video so I'm gonna cut this off so here I am at the secondary inspection station that they sent me to. So after a lot of worrying and talking to supervisors and some questions about where I got the stuff and this and that, um, I was allowed to leave without any problems. So um, I guess that settles it, right? So um, at the first booth, uh, the customs officer, a young guy, and he had no clue about what a Canadian gold maple leaf was. I told him it had $50 face value, but it was worth almost $1,700 almost or whatever. And he was like, how do they determine the value? They have to weigh it or something like that? No, it's a one ounce, it says on it, one ounce gold coin, $50 face value. So he had to go ask somebody in the next booth. And then of course they sent me to secondary and uh, the woman customs officer, she was an older woman, so you would think that maybe she's seen a lot of this stuff. Had no idea. Uh, totally clueless. 
Um, not to say that she's a clueless person, but I mean, they know they don't see a lot, <laughs> a lot of gold coins coming through there, obviously, because she's like, you know, can you take one out so I can see it? And she looked at it, she's just like, okay, and what's the value of this? She didn't know either. And then she brought it to her supervisor and the supervisor looked at it and she came back and goes, oh no, my supervisor says that it's definitely a monetary instrument. And I was told it was a non-monetary instrument from an agent from that very office. So uh, I was just like, well, I, I was told from an agent here that it's not. And she goes, oh, well, you gotta fill out this form and she was gonna give me the FinCEN 105. And I said, no, I already have I already have it filled out. And so she looked at it and so she goes, okay, so you're saying that the value is, you know, X amount of dollars. And she, then she started asking me, where did you buy these? Um, and I told her I bought them in the US and I brought them to Canada over the years and put them in my safe deposit box. It's just kind of like a insurance policy in case stuff goes wrong I can always come up here and get it uh, and I said but now with these lockdowns keeping it away from me is not so safe anymore so I want to bring them back so that was kind of the extent of the questions about where did you get it you now you see these uh, TV shows and they ask what do you do for a living prove that you have a receipt show a bank statement show a tax return something like that all kinds of stuff like that and I thought I was gonna get the third degree like that they basically asked me or they did ask me I told them I, I bought them in the US and brought them to Canada and they said did you declare them when you brought them to Canada and I said no because I didn't bring them all at once I brought them a little at a time and the price of gold was cheaper so it was under the ten thousand dollar amount at the time when i was bringing it each time so they, they were okay with that answer and so after she said go sit down and let me go talk to i guess she talked to another supervisor and after about five seven minutes or something she came back and she said you are right it is a non-monetary instrument and what she said is she looked it up and that's what she understood and i said I looked it up as well, but it sounded like a lot of legal mumbo jumbo talking about U.S. currency and coins and stuff like that. It, it, it's not clear on their website. They don't say one ounce bullion coins with a face value is not considered monetary. It does not say that. It's it's very convoluted. So I, I'd rather be safe than sorry and fill out the FinCEN uh, 105 and hand it to them and let them know that hey, it's not supposed to be monetary, but look it up yourself and, and figure it out. And one other thing, just like the Canadian Customs uh, Authority told me that it is non-monetary and the $50 face value does not even come into play. So I would think that if it's a $50 face value, if you have 200 coins, that would be $10,000 face value and therefore you would have to report you know, the $10,000 limit. They said that doesn't even uh, come into play. So you can, as crazy as it sounds, if you come in with $10,001 in cash and don't declare it, they could take the whole thing. But if you come in with a million gold coins <laughs> worth whatever, a billion dollars or something, apparently it's non-reportable and you could bring in as much as you want. Now, if you try to bring in a million gold coins, obviously they're gonna ask you, to prove some somewhere where you got it but I had significantly more than ten thousand dollars in gold coins they let me through no problem they really don't know they don't, they obviously don't see a lot of gold coins coming through here so they had no clue what it was they don't know what a Canadian maple is like any coin collector will know Canadian maple Kruger and American Eagle gold coin uh, they were really clueless about these coins and so they have to check a few times to be sure that what I'm saying is is correct and so they verified it now I'm on my way I'm back in the US and uh, no problem so so I hope you guys like this video and I'll see you in the next one thanks for watching